Hello everyone and welcome to Diamonds of Craft where I make things. My name is Sarah and happy Halloween! <laughs> For this video I decided to redo one of my very first customs that I did when I started repainting dolls in 2018. It was Halloween special, a Grim Reaper, and it wasn't the best. This is the old version of the doll. So I decided to give her a makeover using all of the new skills and things that I've learned over the last four years. Hopefully it turns out a lot better than the first one. I'm also really happy to share the first fan art feature on this channel, which was sent to me by Dragon Sheep Studios on Instagram. They have done a fantastic version of Avarice, my demon doll from the last video. Uh, it's just so much fun to have people send their artwork that I can show other people as well. So I will link them in the description box below. Go check them out. Let's get right into the video. Okay, so here is our victim for this re-repaint. And as you can see, she's, well, quite basic. I didn't really have any clue how to make clothes. And I think my idea for this doll was that I really didn't have to. All I had to make was a cloak, but even that is meh. However, there are some good points to note, mainly how there is this hole in the back so her hair has somewhere to go when she's wearing the hood, and her hair is rerouted with this glow-in-the-dark fibre. There is no styling, but I managed to make her part pretty neat. I don't know what I was thinking with the face, I just didn't want to give her a generic skull face, but I hazard a guess that the reason I didn't do this was because I didn't know how. Getting this face off was much more difficult than any others, mainly because of sealant and paint and the glitter in her eyes. But we got there in the end. I wanted to give her hair a little wash to get the years of dust and grime out, as well as refreshing it to untangle it. I just mixed fabric softener with warm water. So finally, a style for this hair. I want her face to be 100% visible and to do something a little fancy so I'm going to French braid the front pieces of her hair down in a frame shape. I tried my best to be neat and I ended up redoing this a few times. It turned out nicely though. But I'm not done, I decided to braid all of her hair to give it a wave when it is undone. I dipped the braids into boiling and cold water to set them and then untangled them when they were dry. I probably should have done this after the face, but here we are. Like I said in the first instance, I didn't want to give her something generic. Plus, I like drawing eyes. But skulls generally don't have eyes unless there's some remaining connective tissue. I drew on an idea which I half liked, but then decided against the eye placement and the way I did a cheekbone. It was hard at first, but I got my rhythm in the end. Now I am drawing on all of the bone structure and I am much, much better at it these days as I have painted many a skull on my own face these past few years. So I'm doing my best to replicate that in tiny and be neat about it. I also tried to follow the bone structure of the doll mold itself. As this is an excellent face, I am going to try my best to let it lead me this time. Also doing my best to blend this dark pencil in as much as possible to give it a little depth. I am not going for the full set of teeth across the face here as I want it to look more like the teeth are sinking back into the darkness. It is right that they're attached to the jaw but sometimes it just looks like there's too many teeth, especially on a 2D scale. Her eyes get much the same treatment, I am trying to make it look like they're more sunken into the skull. But there is obviously a disconnect here in terms of eyes and skin. <laughs> there would be no eyelids, but for this fantasy character, I'm doing what I like. 
Maybe there are eyelids. Maybe there's a translucent layer of skin and you can just see the bones a lot better through it. Who knows? However you think it will work, it'll work. The original doll had these blue lifeless eyes and I am going for blue again. I'm thinking White Walker territory, you know. I took a lot of time to follow the sculpt and shape the head where it calls to be shaded. All the while giving it that twist of my style on top. Not going for realism, but enhancing the spooks. Eyes were getting a bit too dark for me and I did redo the bright eye a good few times. It just wasn't panning out how I wanted it and sometimes that happens. So I tend to focus on another area of the project and this time it was lashes. I also wanted to include those cracks again so they were drawn on very carefully. I managed to get somewhere with the left eye after a small break and had to then recreate that on the right. During this process, it became apparent to me that her expression was increasingly more deadpan the longer that I worked, which gives her the look of being very bored um, and just done with any situation. A bit like a teenager, so maybe she's a bored stand-in for actual grim or an intern or something. And that's the face done with for now. The previous doll was definitely lacking in the accessories department and that just won't do for our new and improved Grimm. I recently watched a video on how to make ribbon roses and I thought I'd try with small ribbon. It was pretty simple. Cut one end on an angle, fold it under itself a few times, stick a needle through the top and feed the cut part through the eye. Then as you pull, you twist so the ribbon forms the flower shape. It was pretty hard to do this with such a tiny ribbon, but it did work out. I then glued the back so it wouldn't all unravel on me and made a few more. These flowers I wanted to make a hairband out of, so using an old bangle, I formed a headband shape. I then sewed the flowers on and glued them for extra support. Then I glued more ribbon on the back so they wouldn't all come off. Very sweet. I didn't want to just put her in a cloak, but I had no clue what to dress her in until I found this half finished lacy dress. I made this a while ago for another project and it was just not finished. It was made specifically so you could see through it which is pretty perfect for this so all it needs is finishing. Now for the real thing, the old cloak was terrible but we are going to remake it in a much nicer fabric. This fabric. I cut out all the pieces and pinned them together before I realised I wanted to basically line it. So I pinned it to another piece and cut around it so when I sew together and turn, the hems are all done. Then for the hood I have this pattern piece from a Hunter Huntsman doll and I'm doing the same thing with this. I folded it over and cut so I can sew them right side to right side. Thankfully this fabric is both right sides. <laughs> no hems for me please. I plan to keep the little hole in the back for her hair to go in. Then I wanted some finishing touches and really wanted to use this leather trim cord 
whatever with this buckle but it didn't make sense to go on the cloak so instead I turned it into a belt on her dress then of course I opted to give the skeleton some eyelashes <laughs> Makes sense? No, but it's not a huge deal if it makes sense or not right now. It was a huge deal trying to get them to stick though. Ugh, never again. <laughs> I made her last scythe out of air dry clay, wire and tin foil. So this time I'm going in a different direction and I'm using Sculpey. I rolled this piece out and cut a blade but I hated that blade because it was too tiny, so I did try again. This is the one I went with, a little more interesting than just the curve. I shaved it down so it was a little sharper and then cut some cracks into the surface. For the handle, you guessed it, it's a barbecue stick covered in Sculpey. And since it doesn't seem to stick well for me, ever, uh, I shape it all gnarled and natural looking. Last time I sculpted a skull onto my scythe, but this time I 3D printed skulls. I don't have a 3D printer, but luckily my good photographer friend Will does, so we printed many skulls of various sizes. We had three big ones, four mid ones, five small ones and 12 really small ones. And I painted them all, it took me an afternoon. After covering it in a few layers of thin base paint, I then washed darker paint into the crevices. I did the same with the scythe when it was all baked, painting a mid-tone and washing a darker tone on top, trying to give it a dark wood kind of look. Now, one last thing I wanted to do was turn this lantern I had into something useful. I replaced the handle with some chains and stuck a little skull in the middle. Then, for more spooks, I am adding very small skulls on the outside. Here is the final scythe, the blade is brushed with chrome powder and I added some skulls on chains for an extra detail. And the lantern also got an adornment of chains. Finally, I never do this, but I'm showing the full outfit. I added chains to her belt, uh, little skull nail art things to the cords on her cloak. And these shoes, I forgot I had them in my stock. I just think they go really well with the whole outfit. And with that, she's done.
and here she is, all finished. I think it's safe to say that she's definitely better than she was. <laughs> I think the addition of the lantern and just my general skill of making staffs and things now is definitely better than it was. I've learnt a lot from watching people on YouTube, so it definitely helps. Uh, let me know what you think of that in the comments down below. If you want your own fan art feature, DM me on Instagram. As usual, all of the pictures were taken by Will Charlton Photography. You can also find his link to his Instagram down below. If you like this video, just give it a like. Consider subscribing if you want to see more content like this. If you leave a comment, don't be a dick. And... Um, ring my bell. Happy Halloween to all of you out there who are celebrating it. Uh, I will see you on the next one. Bye! It's Halloween!